it's February, which means it's interview invite season. I hope that all of you GC hopefuls are hanging in there and staying sane while simultaneously checking your email inbox thousands of times each day. If you are stumped on where to start for interview prep, you feel like you push through the application process and getting those personal statements written, but you just don't know where to begin with interview prep, this video is for you. I'm going to give you a very clear plan that you can work through right now from the comfort of your bed, your couch, your desk, to get you started on interview preparations in just 15 minutes today. What we're going to work on today are answers to behavioral interview questions. It is almost a guarantee you're going to get a few of those behavioral interview questions. Tell me a time that you failed at something and how you handled it. Tell me about a time you disagreed with a colleague and how you handled it. Tell me about a challenge you faced in your life and what came of it. Tell me about a time that something unexpected happened. Tell me about a time that you solved a problem creatively. Behavioral interview questions focus on how you've handled a variety of situations in the workplace or in real life. And asking these types of questions, the interviewer is trying to see what abilities or characteristics or skills you have demonstrated with a specific example. Let's talk about a good strategy to answer those behavioral questions. This is a strategy I learned back when I was preparing for my very first interview before genetic counseling grad school, and it's called the STAR strategy. STAR is an acronym that stands for Situation, Task, Action, Result. So for each behavioral question, you're going to begin by setting the scene. What was the situation? Next, you're going to move on to task. What was the task at hand, the problem or the challenge? Describe the challenge that you faced. Next is the action. What did you do? And finally, R is the result. What is the outcome? What did you achieve and how? Now that you've learned about the STAR method and you know that behavioral questions are a common part of genetic counseling interviews, you're going to start building your bank of personal experiences that you can draw upon to answer these questions. You probably only need about five to seven experiences to answer all of these behavioral questions because a lot of them will overlap. You'll see when I give my example how I could have used the same story with a few minor tweaks to answer a variety of these behavioral questions that I listed earlier. Let's get into my example. The interviewer says, tell me about a time you were faced with an ethical challenge. Instead of answering the interviewer the moment their lips close, take a moment, collect your thoughts. I'm scanning through my personal stories and thinking about which one would answer this question best. In the interview, I would have probably paused for five seconds and thought about it. For the sake of this video, I'm going to break up my answer into the four parts. S. S is for situation. I'm going to set the scene. Years ago, I worked as a clinical genetic counselor at a fertility clinic. The job had lots of perks. I loved the population we served. I loved the mission of helping people build their families. I was very close friends with a number of my colleagues. Next, I'm moving on to the task or the challenge or the problem. About a year and a half into the job, research started coming out about the pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy. That's the genetic testing that can be done on a biopsy that's taken from an embryo created with IVF. The data continued to grow, showing that Mosaic resulted embryos could result in babies who appeared perfectly healthy at birth. There were certainly gaps in the data, and there still are. Concerns about risks for a child to be born who's affected with a genetic syndrome, higher risks for miscarriage, and those were all valid concerns. As this data continued to come out, I felt very strongly that any patient who utilized PGTA should be able to know whether any of their biopsies were indeed mosaic and then to choose what to do with that embryo as long as they had appropriate counseling and understood the limitations of what was currently known and the potential risks. At the time, the clinic I worked for was not willing to report mosaic resulted biopsies. So essentially, embryos that were found to be mosaic were labeled as aneuploid or abnormal. To me, this felt like it was taking away the patient's autonomy, and it was also potentially doing harm. For patients who have very few embryos or maybe could only do one cycle, Perhaps that one embryo that was called abnormal, it was actually mosaic and could have gone on to result in a healthy pregnancy and live-born baby. As the evidence continued to roll out, I began to feel more and more anxious about my role, how I was counseling patients within this clinic, and my job satisfaction really declined. The problem was my ethics didn't really align with the company's decision-making. Now I'm going to move on to A in the STAR acronym and think about action. I took about six months to read the research, to sit with my feelings to a mentor who is a genetic counselor, 
and to talk to other people who've been in careers, like my parents, and get their take on it. The advice I received definitely varied depending on the person I spoke with. Ultimately, what I realized is that if my personal values no longer align with my employers, that is not going to be a good fit in a career for me. I started looking around for different genetic counseling positions, with, and I found one that better aligned with my beliefs about patient autonomy and my beliefs about mosaic reporting and interviewed and got the position. I gave my boss at my current job my two weeks notice, and, and I left on great terms with my boss with the company and with my colleagues there. Finally, I'm moving on to R for result. While I was nervous to leave my very first genetic counseling position, especially because it had quite a few perks, I realized that working for a company that aligns with my values is one of the most important characteristics when I'm searching for a job. I was really happy with my next position and I was able to see the level of integrity and transparency that a big lab can have with their customers. If I was in the same position today, there is one thing I would have liked to do differently. I would have liked to have a discussion with my supervisor to explain my viewpoints, but more to understand hers. I really respect that boss. And I feel like I probably had an opportunity to learn something from her and to understand why the decision was being made at the company that differed from my own viewpoints. Today, I think I have the confidence to take on one of those more difficult conversations. That would be my answer using the STAR approach. Now, behavioral interview questions, they are going to have longer answers than typical. I'd say around two to four minutes or so is the duration you're going for when you're answering a behavioral interview question, just because there are a number of things you need to hit on to explain the scenario well. Okay, time to turn it around on you. Now that you've heard one of my answers and you've heard a variety of those behavioral questions, which I'll list again down below in the comments, What I want you to do is pause this video, set a 10 minute timer on your phone or computer and journal out in a G-Doc or in an actual journal, two different scenarios that you've had at past jobs, at school, or just in your life that could answer some of these questions, a challenging time, an ethically challenging time, a difficult conversation with a coworker, a problem, a problem you solve creatively, those types of things. Again, a lot of them overlap. So build two stories out, Think about the story, write about it, or think about it in your mind, and then go through the STAR method. Situation, task, action, result. Pause. Welcome back. I hope you had some good journaling. The next step is going to be to try it. Turn on your camera or your webcam and just try it. It doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't matter if you're literally laying down. Go through one of the examples you just wrote down. Welcome back. Okay, now what I want you to do is review the video. So you're gonna watch it back to yourself. And there's a few things you're gonna be looking for when you're watching it back. Really importantly, how did you do on actually answering the question? Was it clear what the scenario was? Was it clear what actions you made and what those actions demonstrate about you or your skill set? Are those abilities or skills that you described characteristics that would make you a good genetic counseling student or genetic counselor? Beyond that, take some notes about your facial expression, your level of enthusiasm. Describing an ethical scenario or a challenge, you might not have as much excitement as other questions. So take that into consideration. Take note of the length of your answer. Do not go over four minutes and write down a couple of pieces of feedback for yourself. Okay, for the next week, what you're going to do is repeat this exercise. You are going to add one personal story to your list of personal story examples and you're going to star it out. You're going to record yourself using that example and watch it back and write down feedback for yourself. And in just seven days of spending about 15 minutes a day, you are going to improve significantly on the way that you answer these behavioral questions. So this is a concrete way you can prepare for your interviews and you can improve significantly in just one. Let me know what interview questions do you have down below? Did you find this interview video helpful? And how can I help you prepare? Wish you guys luck, bye. Oh, 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 oh,